mu uh, musicians hangout on YouTube. Ah. Hello. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's great to be back. Hey, hey. And tonight we have Anuda as our special guest host on Musicians Hangout. Yay! Welcome, welcome. welcome. Um, but first, before we get started, um, let's go over a couple things. You want to go over our uh, mission statement? Absolutely. So our mission statement for uh, Musicians Hangout is to be part of a revolution to create friendships with other artists and build a community network to save music. All right, and we definitely, yeah, that is definitely our thing. We also have a drinking game tonight. So um, there are some rules. Number one, no underage drinking. So kids, grab your soda, your juice, water, coffee, tea, whatever, but no alcohol. Adults, live it up. Uh, you're over 21. Tonight, I'm drinking my usual vodka and squirts. <laughs> and I have my red wine. Oh, man, I should have brought mine. Oh, well, you're mine. more than welcome to go grab something. <laughs> yes, you can always go grab something real quick. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, okay. so that here's the rules on the drinking game outside of no underage drinking. Um, there are some keywords that you need to listen to. So every time these words are said, you take a drink. Maxine's are right on. Mine are, uh, is wicked. And tonight, Nuda, her word is nice. So every time you hear those words, you take a drink. Nice. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> I knew that was going to happen, so I was pretty. <laughs> you were ready for it. Yeah, it's been a week already. That's awesome. <laughs> I jammed for like three days straight, like Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Oh, yeah, the holiday. Yeah, <laughs> and when you have friends come over that you jam with, and they spend the night, and before they leave, you want to jam with them more. And yeah. then after your band practice, <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of... It's just a like rolling effect of fun. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. I always love, I love, love my drums. So, what kind of drum, uh, a drum set do you have? I have a PDP. It's a uh, six piece, let's see, five, no, seven piece, sorry, seven piece and seven cymbals. Nice. And then, Maxine, what do you have? I have a PV from about 20, 25 years ago. I'll try to show y'all. And it's sort of, whoa, I forget, it's backwards, so. Yeah, it's backwards land here. So it's sort of a meat and potatoes. I just got like three toms, the two up top, one on the bottom floor, and my snare. And yeah, uh, it's a big drum set, but um, not a lot of drums to it. And then I have my crash cymbal, my ride, and my hi-hat. And I have a china back there, but I don't take the china to live shows. China's just... Oh. <laughs> I love my china. I love my thrash. My thrash is like a little, it's it's like a 10 inch and it's wavy and it sounds like a cross between a splash and a china. Oh, it's so cool. I love it. Oh, I goodness. love that thing so much. It's my favorite. Like, it's just like a little accent thing that you play at the, like, the end, like when you're finishing, like with the shh. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty kind sweet. Of thing. I, I can play a little bit of drums. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, my dad's a drummer, so I go play oh. drum it sometimes. Um, oh, my dad was so a drummer, cool. too. Yeah. Oh, cool. Musicians in the family. I love it. That is so awesome. Oh, my gosh. So our chat room is blowing up, you guys. Oh, my goodness. Nuda, you're pretty popular. I see some <laughs> of your friends on here. I got Token, Pound. I've got... Um, our friend Marianne Little. Hi, Annie. And uh, we got Spaniard 71. Very cool. Hi, everyone. Oh, and Saturine Della Carox. I hope I said your name right. I am sorry if I didn't. So, hi, everybody. <laughs> 
Spaniard 71 says dad. Dad, dad says hi. That's my dad. Hi, Adam. Hi, Adam. Adam. Hi, Moscow. <laughs> hi, everybody. <laughs> hi, Annie. You know, you were supposed to be here today. Um, yeah, get over yeah. there. Oh, another thing is we try to keep it a little, I would say PG. We don't try to be keep it too GG. <laughs> Not too GG, but a little PG. Yeah. We, try to, we try to run with um, FCC regulations. So and like, I, try, I try so hard. Like, I need a button. <laughs> Crash, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, the beats and the black bars. I feel, like, I feel like Ricky from Trailer Park Boys, and he's like, if I can't drink and smoke and cuss, then I can't even, like, defend myself in court. <laughs> so they give him permission. Oh my I don't God. think the FCC is going to give me permission to... We have um, Miss Ashley on. She says, hi, Auntie. I freaking love you to Nuda. Hello. Hello! Oh my gosh, Anise, that's great. I love my. No, niece. that's me. That's that's my oh, Ashley. No, it's it's for Crash. I <laughs> Hi, Ashley. Hi, Hi Anise. Subscribed. That's awesome! Wow, we got a lot of viewers tonight. This is great. Yeah, so, that's crazy. I guess Nuda, tell us a little bit about yourself. What does your name mean? How did you yes. come up with your musician name? Um, well, some of it was Google. <laughs> what names are not used yet? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I did come across uh, this one. Nuda means naked in French and boredom in Polish. Uh, oh, wow. So my mom's side, she's, she's Polish. So I'm like, yeah, hey, this is kind of fitting. And then I, I like just the name Nuda because it shows like the vulnerability and um and things like that especially in in music you show your your true self and yeah be able to, to be i have to agree it's like that's when i'm my most vulnerable is like when i'm back there like smashing up music yeah yeah that's um it's a big uh, co uh, positive coping mechanism so it's just a sick your happy place and just go chill around even if you don't even make something that sounds good it's just the the matter of hitting keys and just making something or playing guitar. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed it. I've, I've been in music for, since I was fourth grade. Wow. So my first instrument was violin. Uh, it was one of the classes in elementary school where uh, you were allowed to start taking um, music classes. So I have a list, you know, like what instrument do you want to play? There are wind instruments and then there were, uh, you know, trombone and violas, but I like the violin. And I was super tiny. Uh, the violin, like they measure it from your chin to, you know, the to your palm of your hand. Uh, now, it doesn't work out, but now it goes like up to here. Oh, cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> super tiny. Oh. Um, so I did that for about a year and a half and um, I still have it. And the original case and everything and Aww. even these strings that my dad came to my school one time because it broke in the middle of the class i'm like dad i need a replacement string so we came to school and, and brought it and i still have the package in the case so it's it's just been been in there forever um so after that i uh, went to uh, in middle school about 13. um i wanted to play guitar my uncle gave um my family, a, a Fender electric guitar, and then just a little jinky amp, you know, and I was making horrible sounds out of it for a while. <laughs> um, but my dad also played acoustic guitar, so he showed me one, one note, just one part of it. And at the time, I absolutely loved Blink-182. I just listened to the crap out of them. So I learned every single Blink-182 song, and I just played them on repeat. And then uh, I, was, I was on that. I remember there were kids from school who we all lived in a cul-de-sac on a lake. And we have a bunch of friends come over, people saying, it was all like the emo phase, you know? So like a Ben Sevenfold and a Trey. Oh, yeah. A Trey, yeah. 
we, we'd all play those songs and they came over for my birthday one year and I have the video still somewhere and it's so good. <laughs> <It's so laughs> <laughs> We're all like out of beat and just like making sounds and Yay, that's awesome. <laughs> um, so that that was fun because you can you can see people like putting their amps on skateboards. Oh. And just like running it down the street to, to get it over. Uh -huh. Yeah. I love it. Oh, back in the day. Yeah. Um, so after I played for quite a while, uh, maybe about a year and a half, and I was actually getting pretty good to where my parents probably weren't cringing their ears anymore. <laughs> and, um, so I really wanted a new guitar, and it, it was a while. Um, oh, here's my Katie. Hi, Katie. So, uh, I grew up. This is Pancake. Pancake. Oh, oh, I freaking love it. <laughs> An adopted street kitty. Her, her mama had a litter and I, I took one of her in. Aww. Yeah, one of two, the fat ones over there. Yay! The fat one. <laughs> There's always a fat one. Pancake the fat one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so oh, I grew up on a lake. And uh, we had like a dock and everything, you know. Wow, fun. That's all. Grew up fishing all the time. Hi, yeah. Kalayla. Sorry, she. Another one of my nieces is watching. <laughs> we have a, a lot of family members that join here. Oh, yeah. cool. Very nice. Very supportive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, but go on. Have to drink. So you grew up on a lake. <laughs> yeah, so I uh, grew up on the lake, and there was a time my dad and I, we went um, fishing on the boat just by ourselves, and uh, it was a man-made lake, so um, there was a lot of carp in there that people didn't want, so we're like, if you catch one, you can bring it in, we'll give you 20 bucks for, for fish. Uh, so we're in the middle of the lake, and then uh, my dad threw out the casted out lure, and he thought he got something, he pulled up to try to get it, there was no fish, and it went white into my calf. <laughs> the lure, it was a it was a trouble hook too. So it went right through my calf. I was oh. like, uh yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I hurried up and was like drove home as fast as possible. And I was like starting to go into shock and like freaking out. He's like, don't look at it, don't look at it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he got home and uh, he like iced my leg to where he numbed it and I didn't feel anything but he got it out. Um, and then he felt so bad, um, uh, for like, dude, that's gnarly, you know, though. Yeah, <laughs> I still have the lure too as a souvenir, <laughs> dude. That's badass. That's actually, <laughs> yeah, badass. you gotta keep that. <laughs> and, awesome. Oh my goodness, I had this cat like this, this guy, like, she's like, like, one day. Uh, my ex-husband was, was getting stuff, and she was playing with the lure, and she somehow got it stuck between her abdomen and her leg. Like, there's some webbing. Oh, cool. And she just started running around the house. It's attached to fishing line. So oh, we're really oh. out the fishing line. I'm trying to catch the cat. Oh, my God. It was... My cat did the same thing. We got thing. it, and then we cut the because you know it was a barb. It was a barb right. lure, so mm -hmm. we cut the barb off yeah. and pulled it out. And I'm just like, oh my god, kitty. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that that's so crazy. My my other cat, the fat one, he went through the same exact thing. And it just my parents came home, it was like stuck in his paw into the side, and had to take him to the vet. To oh. Get it. But, Okay. Yeah, I was like, I just took care of that at home. <laughs> I was just like, it's <laughs> oh, oh, it horrible. But we, yeah, cats, man, they're lucky they have nine lives because, yeah, oh, yeah, they go through the first one in like, I don't know, six months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. I just got my cat too when he went through all that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, he's gonna die. I only had him for like a few weeks. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was like bawling at school. I was like, I hope he's okay. I just feel oh. like somewhere daredevil stage and then 
I don't know. Then they just chill out for a while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I think he's 13 now. Oh, he's an older guy. Is 13 as well. Oh, yeah. They're like little little pieces pieces. Five. I don't know where he is. He's somewhere. <laughs> and then my other cat, Fernando, he just turned a year old in May. So he's just a little over a year old. Oh, look at <laughs> But he's way bigger than Miss Bat because he's a Maine Coon mix. So he's huge. Oh, wow. He is here. <laughs> what color? Scared of everything. Ma, Fernando's black. Okay. okay. And then Bats is calico. Oh, that's adorable. She's really pretty. She usually makes a, an appearance during the show, so hopefully she comes mm -hmm. around. Give her time. <laughs> She'll come around, yeah. <laughs> so where are you at right now, Nuda? Like, where is your studio? So studio is in my in my boyfriend's apartment. Uh, it's a den that we decided to turn into a studio. And yeah. when we moved in together, of course, it was the very first room we put together because priorities. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's a uh, guitar player as well. So we have yeah, high sky, ten, by the way. guitars in here. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give a shout out to Sky. Hi, yeah, Sky. shout out to Sky. I also follow follow him. I follow you guys, so I think it's great. <laughs> it's a lot really of fun. Cool to see couples that are so into each other. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's especially when they're both musicians. You know. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's pretty nice too because you you understand the dynamics and the long hours and having to put on the show and like flirt and mingle with people after the show, you know? And having fans and yeah. yeah. Exactly. So we love that or like that band practice is like, um, so we drink a little bit. I'm just gonna stay the night. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it. it totally fine. Um, cool. so yeah, it's a lot of fun. We actually are going to play our very first show together uh end of this month. So Ooh. Bucket list item. This is pretty cool. Uh, he's, he's, yeah, he's um, in the band BK Zero. They are an industrial golf band and um, they're out of LA. Um, so they actually asked me to play keyboards with them. So oh, nice. oh, okay. Yeah. And then That's cool. and last night, um, I put a little snippet on Instagram last night. Uh, we were practicing together. like. Oh my god, this is really awesome. And we don't hate each other. <laughs> That's right. awesome. Yeah, yeah. We argue with we, yeah, we kind of know that kind of practicing yeah. together and not hating each other thing. Yeah. Wow, that is so awesome. Yeah, I saw you post something about them a while back, and I thought maybe you were playing a show um as Nuda um with them also but i didn't know you were playing for them that is so cool yeah yeah i'm excited i'll try to promote it a little bit more in a couple of weeks i try to stretch out content <laughs> so people don't get bored uh, but yeah i'm super excited it's at a event called wasteland weekend it's a post-apocalyptic fully immersive event like a whole weekend Klonda um, Kate, <laughs> she usually goes to that every year too that is cool yeah, it's my first one, and it's in the middle of the desert in California. It's going to be freaking hot. Yeah. Uh, I'll be wearing, like, a full-on, like, apocalyptic mask and goggles. I and yeah, yeah, you posted that. It's so cool. But, yeah, that'll be really hot. Yeah, very. Cool. Um, but it'll be worth it. Oh, it will be. Totally worth it. Oh, it's my like God. a real-life um, Mad Max kind yeah. of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, like I said, Kate Roxwell from Klondike Kate goes to it every year. So, yeah, I'm excited for it. It's gonna be fun. Oh my gosh, I'm excited to watch how that. Like, I know I'll watch the post, so I'm like, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'm telling Sky, I'm like, okay, we need to bring all the GoPros and all the cameras, and we need to film like everything. Yeah. So, so besides the mask, what else are you going to wear? Do you have your outfit picked up too? Yeah, so I got some super, super um, shorts that are ripped up. They're pretty much like booty shorts and then ripped up uh, tights. 
and I got some wastelandish boots, and um, I've got this really cool shoulder piece, and like it's a leather buckled, like very cool thing. It's got like kind of like a rubber pipes going through it. Oh wow! And it's just like a full on lace that goes up to here and cut across here. Um, I need help putting it on. <laughs> and then it's just like super straight, and then I'll have the mask, so I'm like kind of right. <laughs> well, a little bit. Um, I just found a top today that's all like kind of cool looking, and then um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I have my, my belly showing, so I'm like, okay, I need to do a lot of ab workouts before then because I want to make sure I look good. <laughs> I need to stop eating pizza for a month or something. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I'm super excited. I can't wait. Oh, I'm excited for you. That's going to be such a fun show. Oh my gosh. Right on. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Nuda, you wanted to play for us. Maybe if you're feeling it, like we would totally love to hear your, um, your song. Is it the new one you just released, The Waking? Yep, it's the latest single. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm happy to play it for you guys today. It'll be the first time played ever, so you guys will be the first. Oh, yay! Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, um, let me move my camera a little bit. Yeah. This is a special treat for you all. <laughs> Our second live performance because our first live performance was the coming war but um this is our first live performance used powered by Streamyard. so yes oh, very cool very cool okay i might mess up but i'm gonna find it anyway <laughs> all right here it goes Thank you. 
That was even even Anthony had to come check it out. Like, <laughs> oh, really? oh, nice. Oh, he oh. loves electronica music. Like, he really loves it. Yeah. And I love it too. So, oh, that's really cool. So yeah, no, that is awesome. You're really cool, girl. Oh yeah, yes. well, I was rocking. Look at that. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the equipment you used. Yeah. Yeah. So this has all been accumulated. Um, and change over the years. Uh, my first, like, real equipment, like, I got a, a M Audio IO and a little dinky M Audio, like, little keyboard, a MIDI keyboard. Um, and over the years, I kept adding more and more and more. So right now, I have a Korg Mini Log synthesizer, um, and I have a, a Kai NPK MIDI keyboard. Oh, cool. and I'm yeah, an upgrade from my last one that was like 10 years old. Oh, and wow. For guitar, I got one of the top or most favorited um, module. So it's a rack mount. It has every single amp effect thing you can even think of. Um, and that with a pedal. So I'm super excited with that. It's even better than skies. So, huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've upgraded my IO. I use a Roland uh, Optic Capture. It's actually one I used in um, my last band, Possessed Tranquility, when I was playing guitar. Um, so I got gifted that. And then I, I built this whole mount road case. So everything was black mounted and super OCD with cables and such. Uh, I was posting online Instagram the other day, my whole process, because I ripped out the whole entire studio and redid it because I had a table I just hated and it just made me look even shorter. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I need, I need to change this. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I use a in-ear system. So at live shows, I just hear a click track and the back tracks in my ears and that means I don't need a floor mm -hmm. monitor. That makes oh, wow. it a lot more cleaner so you don't have to keep battling that you know so wow that that part's cool and then a wireless guitar system and i hate to say it but when it comes to guitar stuff i'm so retarded i don't know stuff I don't know. <laughs> i'm the same way i'm a drummer through and through so i'm like oh cool well, i can get some bass stuff down because i was a bassist first yeah. and like you i started out on the violin and then I moved up to the viola and I actually played for the Denver Junior Symphony. I played professionally for the Denver Junior Symphony by the time I was 12 years old. Okay. And um, then from there I went to the stand, or I went to from cello to stand up bass, then to electric bass. But honestly, my heart's always been with the drums since ever since I was a kid. Yeah. I just never had the confidence. And then, um, Chris Black, a friend of well, everybody, everybody knows Chris Black. Um, he gave me drumsticks and was like, smack away, girlfriend. I'll show you a beat. 
And I have to give a shout out to my boys. I'm sorry. I have to give a shout out to my boys in IPK. Um, I got the sweetest message from Troy, our vocalist, who said that I was like the best drummer that they had ever had. Aww. And it just made me feel like so special because I'm, I'm an okay drummer. Like I can hold my own, but sometimes I feel like, Oh, I know I'm not, I know I'm not the best drummer I can be yet. And I got stressed yet because I'm still always progressing. Yeah. It, just, it makes you feel good when you're kind of doubting yourself a little bit and your bandmates come out with, dude, you're the best that we've ever had and like ever. Aww. So I got to Thanks for that, guys. Love Yay. You. Much love, IBK and oh. Fable Butterfly. <laughs> Yes. So, so when can we hear you play drums then? You want? I so said, when can we hear you play drums? Ooh, uh, September fourteenth. Actually, uh, the Maxwells and I both have a show with the Merkwood. Yes, we do. In Arlington, uh, the show starts unfortunately at four p.m. It's an early show. Yeah. Um, but it's also four days before my birthday. Hey, happy so, early birthday. Oh, we're going to have drinks. So yeah, we'll watch the kick-ass show and have drinks with me for my birthday. When can we catch you? I am almost done preparing for live shows. I have total OCD and I'm a perfectionist with setting things up. Um, Are you a Virgo? Scorpio. Ooh, so close. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably annoyed a lot of my band members in the last band. Because <laughs> I'm oh. like, oh, right, no one needs to do this way. <laughs> so this time I'm on my own, so I get to do everything. Uh, I get that. I mean, that's basically why Max and I are a uh, power duo. We're a two-piece because, yeah, we're a little OCD with our stuff, too. So I get it. Yeah, and in the first show, I want it to be like, so epic that people remember it and want to come back. Not just like, here's a little bit of it, and then the next show I add more, next show I right. add more. I just want it all at um, once. Just yeah. remember, the more epic you make your first show, you have to one-up that <laughs> <laughs> every time. Yeah. So you want to start out kind of like, I'm doing this, this is fun, you know? <laughs> And then get your followers that way. By the time you make your the big time, you're just making these amazing shows. If you start out making these amazing shows, it's kind of hard to top that, you know? <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. Well, and Nuda, anything you do will be awesome. Oh, I know. I know it. It's yes. Amazing. Absolutely. Really yeah. yeah, you're really good. It's been really cool to follow you. And uh, I was actually going to ask, like, and um, actually, I was going to say real quick, um, Bands for Bands, which you and I are both a part of, um, it, it's been blowing up about Nuda, 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 Nuda. So just letting <laughs> you know, Bands for Bands, which we're worldwide on that one. We're totally um, worldwide, yeah. They are 110,000% like supporting you. So you have that support. Oh, that's fantastic. I love that. Yeah, it's um, a lot of fun. I'm super nervous because it's just me uh, playing keyboards and the focus is on me, which I am an introvert. And I'm oh. just like, this is so <laughs> Wow. Maxine yeah. and I know all about being an introvert. <laughs> we get that we hide behind our drums. Yeah, you guys have, have a throne in front of you guys. That's, yeah. yeah, I set my symbols like right here. So. <laughs> yeah. I might be singing and playing, but I'm hid behind my symbols. Yeah, I, I like to be to be hid in and heard and not seen. <laughs> maybe I should have kept my last table that I had. It was a it was called a DJ table and it was actually up higher. Higher so yeah. too tall for me. I'm like, damn it, maybe I should have kept it so I'm hidden a little bit more. <laughs> but I, I'm super short, so I needed to get something a little more portable and just fits in that nicer. Um, so do you have plans for singing and uh, playing keys also? No, I am not a singer. I yeah, that's what everyone that's what I thought too for years and years and years. And guess what, sister? 
Yeah. Now I play drums and sing. Dang. Just like Max, Maxina. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. <laughs> It's backward. Everything is backwards. Yeah. So no matter like which way I'm trying to point, it's always the backwards way. <laughs> like it's over there. <laughs> Next scene's over there somewhere. Let me take a pic. So Nuda, I was gonna ask you, like, when did you decide to go as a single artist? Like when did that happen for you? Oh yeah. It happened a couple years ago. Um, I was going through the, the hiatus and stuff, and um, I had I've made a few songs over the last seven years. Like I had two of them that I have on the album. Okay. Um, and they just sat there for years, and over time, I kept investing more and more money into things and finding new sounds and more fun stuff. So um, I had it as a goal, like you know, I have a lot of tools that I to use to actually pull out a full album and like okay I'm just gonna try it because I'm not in a band right now I'm super busy so yeah. with my solo album I can do stuff till like three four in the morning and not worry about it and yeah. uh, I just set a, a goal for myself like okay um early this year um I'm gonna put out an album so I'm a professor here and I need a deadline. So once it came from here, I'm like, okay, girl, cool, I need to finish some fun. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Oh my God. Um, yeah, yeah. Especially doing every single thing. I'm sure you guys already know, but like the marketing, uh, the, uh, the website, oh, yeah. creating oh, yeah. merchandise, what to do, how to work things. Um, and that's just the the basis of it. There's also trying to get interviews like this and, and meeting fantastic people like you guys and uh, <laughs> getting album reviews, things like that, let yeah. alone having even thought about the live show piece where you have to build stage boxes and lights and all the things, yeah. program all this stuff. So um, it's taken some time, but um, I really, really enjoy it. But I was going to say, it's so worth it in the end. Oh, like, yeah. getting up there and being able to express yourself musically. Like, yeah. I don't care if we get paid in drink tickets. It's yeah. so worth it just to, like, be able to play what I want to play. Yeah. And that was another thing, too, is, like, I miss playing so much um, band in position quality uh, electric band I played back in California. Um, we ended on the on a high note. We had a sold out uh, music video and album release show, cool. and it was so fun. We had like a, like a backdrop for people to take pictures with us, and oh, oh, like that awesome. that was, we were all behind the stage, and the projector screen went down, and we played the music video. And once that ended, we started playing, and the screen started rising up, and we did our whole show, and it was just amazing. Oh my, oh, god. my god, sounds great. And then every time I go to a concert, which is quite often, I'm like, I want to play a show again. I miss this so much. <laughs> so, yeah, um, yeah. I, I got tired of missing things, so I, I decided to start. Wow. What was the name of the band? Possessed Tranquility. We have uh, we have an album out on Spotify too, and the music videos on YouTube. Uh, that that one, uh, it was a water theme music video. Oh, so, oh, I remember pictures from that. You were yeah, like, yeah, that, that was, was really intense. intense. It was in a 52 degree pool in the fall. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was so cold. And then, of course, that was more than one take. And we had to oh. get jumping in the pool over and over again to get the right shot. And um, yeah, it, it was a lot. And then um, I actually have a music video filmed for Resistance, a song on my album. Oh, and I will. That will be released in October. Actually. Oh, yeah. And, and there were some uh -oh. water scenes in that. And I'm like, God damn, I'm tired of these water scenes. I'm like, it's so cold. Yes. <laughs> I can't get away from the water. But yeah. the water is hard. I've uh, I filmed uh, our music video lady or took too soon it's about lady of the lake from lake crescent and she died um well she was murdered and dumped in the lake and then the um the story goes that it's a true story 
her body surfaced three years later and the lake had preserved her. So they were able to avenge her murderer because she had looked like she had just died. Yeah. And I went into the water and it was the end of October and the, the water was 42 degrees. So it was really cold. It was about 50, 55 degrees outside. And then to be in the water and then wet and have to film more because I came out of the water as a zombie and then crawled up the hill. Yeah. And we had to take a few shots of that. I was so cold. I couldn't feel my legs for about 45 minutes. Oh um, it was pretty crazy. Uh oh. Yeah. We lost Crash. It looks like Crash is not <laughs> right now, but that's okay. She'll reconnect. And um, usually when technical difficulties happen like this, I just go into my segment. Okay. So I'll go over some music news. And Max popped me some popcorn. And part of that is we always have popcorn because we all know there's some drama out there in the music world. <laughs> Somewhere out there. So what I've got for today, Wednesday, September 4th. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. <laughs> <laughs> NBC News released an article online about how they have been using music therapy in Puerto Rico to help heal children that are facing trauma and post-traumatic stress from hurricanes. Uh -huh. That's really yeah, cool. That's really interesting and really cool that they they talked about that in the article, and I hope that you know in the in the states that they adopt that too because it's really important for all traumas to be dealt with in in a therapeutic way. And what better way than with music or art? Right. Cheryl Crow was interviewed by NPR's Mary Louise Kelly. She was talking about her new album Threads. And she announced that it is most likely her last album. So everybody check out Cheryl Crow's supposed last project. Hopefully she's fibbing and is going <laughs> to do something else. But I totally get it if Cheryl needs a break. Yeah. Taylor Swift, her new single, Lover, has topped the charts at number one. Also for Taylor Swift, she announced on CBS Sunday Morning News uh, during their live broadcast that she plans to re-record her existing catalog in order to regain artistic and financial control. So what I didn't know about Taylor Swift is that her record company and her producers owned most of the rights to her music, mm -hmm. which happens to a lot of artists, unfortunately. And uh, they were making $300 million off of her 1989 album. Wow. And she only saw a portion of that. This new single that she released, Lover, is the first song that she completely owns. Wow. And one million copies have already sold. That is so cool. So power that. to her, like, taking back the ownership of her own music. Mm -hmm. because so many of us can be led astray in the music industry. So good for her for fighting back and taking ownership of that. Right. On loudwire.com, Disturb has landed the seventh straight main screen uh, rock chart topper for the track No More from their 2015 album Evolution. And that has been done by this infamous rock group. So they've been leading the charts for quite a while on the, the rock revolution chart. So that's really cool for Disturbed. Mm -hmm. So that's what I got so far, that and with my popcorn. <laughs> I'm gonna send Crash a message just to check on her. Okay. And then I will follow up with another question for you, Nuda. Sure. And it looks like you got some people here in the chat room. I'll show yeah. you some of those. So from Froggy Crane, Nuda Rocks. Oh, thank you. And Curtis. Hey, I think you, Curtis. You do you know who this is? Yeah, he's uh, my old coworker. Oh, yay! Thanks for tuning in, Curtis. <laughs> Everybody's loving you, girl. Yeah, it's so cool. How are you doing? I'm sending Tony a message. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm sorry, Crash. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, all our stage names. <laughs> I know. Let's see, we've got a Steve Crane with us. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And then um, Sauter9 sent you a heart. Name looks familiar, but thank you. And then let's see, let's see. Spaniard71 was pouring my. <laughs> Hold on, this is for you. Well, thank you so I swear I'm so sick of. Where'd your camera go? Mine? Yeah, I don't see your camera. Oh, I see it. Oh, hi, Betty. I see everybody. Oh, there's a Betty on. I see. Wow. Like, sorry. Technical difficulties. We can't have a show without them. I <laughs> it's one of the segments, right? <laughs> I'm telling you. So, yeah, Internet decided to quit. And now I have all these. Are you posting those on there? Yes. Oh, okay. So, while you were gone, I was posting a bunch of um, the uh, the chat room. Oh, good. <laughs> to show I still, me I still don't see your camera, though. Hmm. I don't know why um, you don't see us, but I can see us. Mm -hmm. I'll ask the chat room. Can you see all of us? Can you guys see all of us? I'll have Max check, too. Yeah, make sure that your camera's working. Okay. Oh, hey, Scott. No. So, so Fresno was the last city I was in in California. Really? You lived in Fresno? I love Fresno. Wow. I used to live in Rancho Cucamonga. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Which isn't too far from Fresno, but... Yeah, it's about a few hours. Yeah, at least like an hour or so. Mm -hmm. We aren't too far. We're just like a few minutes down the road from Upland. Oh, there you are. Oh, now good. I can see you. Yes. Sweet. Sweet. Now I can see you. Oh, yes. Now I see Scott. Yes. Hi, Scott. He said, yes. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Sweet. Right. Glad we're back on. I went over music news crash, so we're all good there, and I have my popcorn. Okay, so... Should I go ahead with your neck of the woods and get that over with? Sure, go ahead. Not that it's like getting it over with. I definitely love, <laughs> love, love supporting my friends in the music industry because this is a hard industry, you guys. Really hard industry. Oh, so we are trying to be so very supportive. Is that Miss Bats? No, that's uh, that's Nudis Kitty. Yeah, that's oh, her thin. Our camera's kind of switched positions. <laughs> uh, yeah, it did. But that's okay. That's okay. So let me get to... Okay, here we are. Sorry, it takes me a minute. You're so, up. in your neck of the woods this week, we have um, Johnny Flambe at Nikki's in Covington, Washington, Saturday night, all night, no cover. And we have... Let's not forget... Thursday night at the Tacoma Dome. Iron freaking maiden. Iron maiden. Oh, I'm so <laughs> bummed that I'm going to be missing that show. But at the same time, I have something cooler kind of going on that night anyways. So. Oh, good. Well, you're going to be there too. Wait, Thursday? Yes, Thursday. <laughs> Where am I Thursday? Our next guest. Oh, <laughs> that's right. We're connecting with him tomorrow to practice. That's right. <laughs> now I remember. Yes. So. Okay. So let's go on. So then we have Friday, September 6th. We have PSO, Mandalok, and the Truck Stop Quickies, Wheel Bite, and W Ill or will at Mutual Friends, Colorado Avenue and Grand Junction. Oh, sweet. That maybe cool. Grand Junction, Colorado, maybe Grand Junction, Washington. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> People, we need to know like what city and state you're at. We're worldwide here. So, and let's not forget our homegirl, Grace 
from Primary Pulse will be doing yeah. a free show at O'Malley's. Oh, got O'Malley's. On Friday the 13th. Oh. And here's the thing. They're giving away free Bob Seger tickets. What? Yeah. That's Don't want to miss that show. And since we're on the Friday the 13th thing, um, I, I definitely want to put our show out, which is Saturday the 14th at Merkwood. It's going to be Fatal Butterfly, Gravitas, and the Maxwells at the Merkwood All Ages. And that show starts at 4 p.m., so it's a little early, kids. But... I promise you, you're going to want to get there early to have your faces melted off, socks <laughs> rocked. Melt the faces. Get you ready for the second show of the night, who I have no idea who's playing that night. <laughs> so, and then Friday night at Tony V's, let's not forget the Glen Cannon Band. Our good friend Glen Cannon from... Um, Windowpane will be playing Tony V's, and he is playing with uh, Wyatt Olney and The Wreckage and Solar Tone. And so this past Labor Day, I had my good friend Adam over and his wife, and we, Adam is an, is, is a, is an old bandmate of mine, but we still jam together. We've been jamming the whole time since he left the band. Um, well, he is playing an acoustic set. And that is at the Bryant Corner Cafe. Oh, that's right. It's all ages. And it is um, September 7th. So Saturday. And it starts at 6 p.m. And it's acoustic and it's amazing. And then we have Shift into Summer and Roots 2 Grind presents a Shift Out of Summer. Oh, nice. Featuring well, the Fly Giants, Sour, Debbie Blackout, mm -hmm. or she has Deborah Bill. Blood, Fire, and the Rainwater, James Honeycutt, The Truck Bad Boys. That's a weird name. Stone <laughs> Evergreen Travelers. Those guys are awesome. I played a show with those guys. Strove, Dylan Patrick, Merrifield. Um, let me see what that's. And that is at the High Tide Bar and Grill in Port Orchard. Ooh. And then Sunday... The picnic at Magnuson Park in Seattle. We have some bands going on. The Shady Rays, the Stacey Jones Band, and guest hosts. And let's not forget our last and only. The Mental Trondé de Jambé is playing tomorrow night at Daryl's. Ooh, at Daryl's, that'll be cool. Well, you might want to you might want to check them out. That's my friend, um, Ido Ido and Jessica Ido. Jessica is a ballerina, and she oh. plays to her husband's guitar riffs and stuff. Wow. Um, yeah. So very unique, very awesome. You might want to check them out. So, that sounds really cool. That's what's happening in your neck of the woods. <laughs> I feel like I'm missing something, though. I looked up the PSO concert, and it is in Colorado. So it is at okay. Grand Junction in Colorado. So you were right. Yeah, and see, and it's because I'm a Colorado girl. Like, I was born and raised there, mostly. So Grand Junction, I always first think Colorado, like always. But anyway, so that's your neck of the woods. Well, and we wanted to shout out to our friend in Germany. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, <laughs> Nag Panzer. That's right so on. Cool. I don't know how to say happy birthday in German, <laughs> but happy birthday and rock on my brother from another mother. 
That's our homework. We'll learn that in German for next year. <laughs> I'm going to like figure it out and just like post it on his Facebook. Yeah, we can use like um, a translation or he's something. He's a huge um, fan of um, our show, Musicians Hangout. And he's a huge fan of Bands for Bands and IPK, my other band, IPK. Because we're, we're trying to start a revolution also where... We have these bands for bands where we tell each other what bands, well, what shows we have coming up. We support each other, put, you know, try to get those numbers up in the social media because that is so important to a lot of other people. I don't get it, but it's important to some people. So we try to get those numbers up there. Yeah, it's really important to promote each other. That's what it's all about. And that's what bands is bands for bands is about. It's just the virtual of musicians hang out. It just sorry guys, but we're a little cooler. <laughs> you got popcorn, huh? I do. Max made me popcorn and passed it to me when you were off mm -hmm. camera, and I was like, "Well, we got popcorn for you know." Yeah. <laughs> so I tried to find the popcorn that I specifically bought. For musicians hang out, and then I remembered that I got a little more tipsy than I had planned the other night and had popped my last bag of popcorn that I was saving <laughs> for Wednesday. Drama in your world, that's great. <laughs> so, Nuda, I had another question for you. Yeah. What is your favorite way to listen to music? So I'm a vinyl girl. How do you listen to your music? Is it streaming? Is it live? Is it CD? Is it vinyl? Um, I like to blast it in my really nice earphones. Yeah. Uh, my commute to work is about an hour. So I'm always just listening to music, just cranked up. Um, yeah. And I, I, I like it a lot. So. Just blessing it at home sometimes in the mornings or in cleaning or just there's nothing else going on. But do you do you stream it or do you play CDs or do you play vinyl or is it radio or so what platform do you use? There's a few things. So Sundays I like to listen to the radio. Uh, I think it's 89.5. Um, every Sunday at 8, it's an industrial radio uh, from like 8 to 10. So I hear some new, new music from that part. Um, I like to stream some music and I do have CDs still that I like to play in my car. It's a very small collection now, but I kept all my favorites. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And then uh, I still have a bunch from iTunes that, that I shuffle here and here. I converted oh, all my CDs onto my, I, or onto my Mac. So my Mac computer is essentially like my huge iPod that I just have just for, I just, it's so old. I can't get on the internet. You can't oh email, you can't do anything except play music. So it's <laughs> a huge iPod. So any music I want, I just put it on there. Cause I can always put it on a, um, a zip drive if I need to. I wish or I could. I I That's all I want to do. <laughs> we don't have... We don't have um, a record player, so unfortunately, there's no vinyl music in our future at this point, which sucks because I just got some new vinyl. Oh, you did? I did. I got Montabasco, which is a local band. That's they put cool. out a new like, little 45 mm -hmm. that I got when I played when they played the Merkwood. So, of course. I'm more of a huge local person. Like I have no idea what big bands are going on in the music industry this day these days. Like when somebody says a band, I'm like, who is that? And they're like, don't you listen to the radio? No, <laughs> yeah. no, I'm a local band. Like I'm a local musician, so I want to support my friends and our local business. So that's who I really. Now, if you tell me, if you ask me who's playing a local scene, I can tell you all day. <laughs> That's I, find, awesome. uh, I find a lot of good musicians when I go to some of my favorite shows, like a lot of the openers I've never heard before. I'm like, oh my god, this is so amazing! And I usually buy their CDs afterwards and look them look them up when I get home. Um, I also 
you're talking about your Mac and iTunes. Over the years, I've gathered 300 gigabytes of music. Cool. That, yeah, so much that I kept having to get bigger and bigger iPods to the point wow. that I don't think you can make one that big anymore. <laughs> I pretty much reached my max on my my MacBook as far as music and just like wow. memory goes completely because I have so many albums and so many songs and every time I get a new album from my friends, of course, that's the first thing I do, put it on my Mac because uh -huh. like that's where all my music is and uh -huh. that's where that's my Hall of Fame there. <laughs> I um we do have a vinyl player. Uh, we have a few, few of them, and we just need to build our collection. I, I like going to those record stores and just like go through. I can spend hours in those stores just going. Oh, that's Wait, record stores. They yeah. still exist. Yes. <laughs> Where? In Seattle. There, there's plenty Easy of Street. Yeah, there's some in Seattle. There's one in Tacoma, I think. Oh yeah. I forget the name of it. There's one in Fremont. Yep. yep. And, um, I'm going to have to check out these music stores you guys are talking about. That's like <laughs> prehistoric times. Yeah, it's, it's a thing, man. It's, a it's thing. almost like non-existent. So that's almost like Greek or uh, Latin language, you know? <laughs> it's non-existent anymore. <laughs> music store should be added to the Latin language. Because <laughs> like the little it doesn't exist. Stuff. Like I remember back in the day, there were tower record stores like yeah. everywhere. Yeah, everywhere there was Hastings everywhere, but now you're like Walmart and Fred Meyer, <laughs> yeah, Amazon. Yeah. That's it. Like the Best Buy and Barnes and Noble, they they've shrunk their their CD library tremendously. But it's pretty yeah. sad. Like it's really sad. Sad. I have one shelf. And it's really it. sad that everything has gone digital. And yeah. like, how are local musicians supposed to make any money in the digital world? Yeah, yeah. Oh. You, for me personally, right now, I'm I'm not. Oh, right. <laughs> I mean, it's um, it's quite an investment, but yes. again, yeah. It's, so it's I did awesome. some vocals for Two Headed Crow, and like. Maybe in 20 years, I might make a penny. That's how it feels. Yeah. So none of us are making music that are making money off our music that way. Because really every time fun. somebody listens to the music, you only get like one tenth of a penny. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, how you have to have 10 viewers to make a penny. So right. it's, it's ridiculous. Hi, buddy boy. I, so I'm it's, it's hard for the musicians these days. Like, I feel like the only thing that we're worth is merch. And even then you got to get people to come to your shows. Yeah. Venues don't want to pay you except in drink tickets. <laughs> and when we were just all fine and dandy, but can you make the drinks just a little bit stronger? <laughs> just a little. <laughs> I mean, I got to go perform. And you want me to do this shit like stone cold sober. <laughs> What's your drink of choice when you get your drink tickets? Yeah, I'm going to get those drink tickets and I'm going to get a beer helmet. <laughs> drink of choice, I usually get either a hard cider or a Bloody Mary. Yeah, or but you can only have wells at a freaking venue. So it's like rum and cokes or whatever's on tap. <laughs> oh, not all the shows I've played are like that, thankfully. No, it's just because you're cute and you can get away with it. <laughs> I, I, I think that's an exception for all of us. Like, we get a little bit, a, a little bit more away with stuff just because we're a little cuter. And it's like, well, I want like top shelf, <laughs> but I want it with this drink ticket. Well, okay, but I expect a bigger tip. <laughs> Well, I also do shots of Jägermeister. So any of you German fans, I am a Jäger girl. Nag Panzer. <laughs> so, Nuda, what's your drink of choice? It used to be a fireball shot. Years ago. Uh, but drinking pretty much 
gallons of it over the years. I got sick and tired of it. Now, <laughs> now I just like go into the fetal position anytime someone says fireball. So like, oh. <laughs> um, I used to I used to love fireball. I used to love that stuff. And yeah. if you follow it up with something, I can't remember. Why does it taste really good? I think it was an angry orchard. Angry oh, orchard. Hard cider. Pie, yeah. Oh, my God. It tasted so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, I just got too grossed out by this the thickness of the um, fireball because it was like syrup. Yeah, it is pretty syrupy. Yeah, so it just got to be kind of hard to swallow. Just like, you know, when you do like 80,000 jello shots, doing another jello shot is just kind of a little hard because you're just like, I'm over the consistency. Yes. So I switched to vodka. And even this, I first it was vodka cranberry. First, then it was vodka pomegranate pa cranberry. Then it was vodka... Uh, ginger ale, vodka, ginger ale, and cranberry, vodka, ginger ale, pomegranate, gin. I mean, it just evolves. Now it's now it's just vodka squirt. Yep. My um, the ones I get now are Washington apple shots. Oh so, my god! My mechanic and I, we used to just get mm -hmm. obliterated. Mm -hmm. Like we <laughs> take like four Washington apple shots before we go to the bar. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. They're dangerous. They're really good. <laughs> they sound really good. It's a yeah, it's crown or apple crown with cranberry juice. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you wouldn't even know that there's whiskey in there. Oh I know. It's you taste there's an alcohol in there, but it's super sweet. So I'm just gonna taste really fast. <laughs> What's really good is um a shot of crown. Followed by a shot of pineapple juice. Oh. I do tequila shots with pineapple juice. Yummy. Oh. Mm -hmm. I have never had tequila. You know, really? I love tequila. It's one of my favorites. Favorite. <laughs> with pineapple juice, though. God, I bet that's good. Yeah, it sounds amazing. Yeah. I've tried it all sorts of weird ass ways, but pineapple juice sounds amazing. You got to do that. <laughs> Discuss is Washington or Italian apples. I don't know what an Italian apple is. I don't know what it is. That one of those cross? Have you guys okay? So I call them crackles. So what it is is it's a, it's a cross between an apple and a pear. Oh, okay. I don't know why I consider oh, really crackles, but they just look like crackles to me. Crapples. But they look like they're the shape of an apple. But they have the consistency of a pear, and it's kind of like a mixture of both. It's like a hybrid. It's good. Yeah. It is good. It is good. But I don't know why I call it a crackle. <laughs> <laughs> now I was like, is it a cranberry and an apple together? And then you were like, it's a pear and an apple. I was like, oh, those are good, but crackle. Yeah, but that doesn't that that name doesn't make any sense. <laughs> okay. Crash. Because it didn't sound right to call it a purple. <laughs> <laughs> purple. <laughs> I had this one tree. I, I'm not even kidding. It was when I was living in eastern Washington. We spliced the two trees together. Half of it grew pears. Half of it grew plums. Oh, cool. Straight in the middle. But you wow. never got a cross of the two fruits. It was just the tree was just like half and half. Pears and plums. Mm -hmm. It was really that's, weird. That's neat. And they didn't intertwine with each other, or yeah, they just they just kind of um. Ooh. Oh, here we go. Scott is telling us. Scott is telling us the fucking sour apple pucker, lemon liqueur, and cranberry juice. Yeah, I yeah. thought there was some whiskey involved in that, bro. Good. Sounds good. <laughs> Oh my, that sounds amazing. I need to try that. I'm now. pretty sure he's trying to put in a Washington apple, but mm, I'm pretty sure there's some crown in there. Uh, what's the Tusca? Is that a type of. Mm, Maybe like that? That? only real women do Crown Royal. What is Tusca? 
But, so, uh, Buddha, I was going to ask you about your inspiration. So, like, what other musicians or other um, bands uh, inspire you? There's a couple of them. Um, Gary Newman is one of my top ones. Uh, he's from the 80s. He had that one-hit wonder, Cars. Um, In Cars, Banner. Yep. <laughs> That's it. Ah. <laughs> Banner, Banner. Yes, I yeah, Gary Newman. Yeah, so he changed his style over the years and it's more of a um, dark electronic and sounds like Nine Inch Nails. Um, they've actually toured together before and covered each other's songs. Um, so he's a huge inspiration up since high school. Um, I was obsessed. <laughs> I had like pictures printed out and put them all over my binder and all this stuff. Aww. Really cool. <laughs> um, and him and um, Skinny Puppy. Oh, yes. I love Skinny Puppy. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. Um, and I got to meet Ogre, too. A oh, couple nice. of times. He's the sweetest guy ever. Um, oh, that's yeah. awesome. And uh, my my walls are covered with signs, Skinny Puppy, and Gary Newman stuff. So. Yay! Yeah. And I even have a uh, tattoos after, after them. Yeah. I I really oh love all of the dark electronic vibes and industrial music is my favorite. So like Frontline Assembly, Skinny Puppy. So I'm gonna turn you on to some industrial music that I like. And they started out in Portland, Oregon, and now they are located in um, LA, and they are called Yacht. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, I actually sing their song called Dystopia, but it's a two part video thing called Utopia Dystopia. You should really check it out. Okay. I love them. I love them so much. Like their videos are just even hilarious. Like she's running on a treadmill with the joystick trying in space. He's just like going at it on a freaking bicycle, like a stationary bicycle, just jamming out on the guitar. Like, <laughs> I just love it. Oh, it's so awesome. It's so awesome. So but you, I, yeah, you've got to check them out. They're called Yacht. Yacht. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple other bands that I really love is uh, Three Teeth. And Cyrus is a new one I discovered on the industrial radio. Um, oh. And I'm absolutely obsessed with them. They're from Australia and they make their own sounds. Like the, the singer, he takes a, a piezo and connects it to an, an electric toothbrush and it transfers the noises into the DAW. So he's brushing his teeth with the electric toothbrush and it's just making like wah, wah sound. It just Whoa, sounds like oh, what? It's, it's so amazing. That's it's awesome. awesome. Dude, I got to see that. What was that name again? Cyrus. Cyrus. S -I Cyrus. Yeah. So have you ever heard of the band called, it's an old band, like an old 90s band called Zymox? No. X-Y-M-O-X. -X. You should really check them out. You kind of reminded me of them. Okay. I love them. They were so, they're really electronica. Mm -hmm. uh, they were just my theme back in the day. When I was into like comic books and <laughs> weird stuff. Yeah, send it my way. I, I really want to check it out. Yeah, when as, as as I was going, you know, getting older, I was like, oh, we got to check out this band Zymox. <laughs> and I checked them out and I was like, uh, they kind of sounded cooler when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not, that they're, not that they're bad now. They're still really good. It's just, I thought it was funny because I was just like, I kind of had a cooler when I was younger. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Music has changed over the decades. It really has. I was going to say, that blows my mind though. Like, I really want to see, I really want to see you sing and play though. Can't lie. I, <laughs> I don't know. Um, one, I don't like the sound of my voice. I, I, Nobody I, likes the sound of their voice. I didn't like I don't, the sound of my I voice. My <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I, I might fiddle around with like super, super, a lot of effects on it. So you can't 
I'm going to see what Sky says to have to say about this. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to push me to learn how to sing too. Oh. Okay, so Sky <laughs> wouldn't push you unless he thought that you had it. <laughs> yeah, he, he pushes me to do a lot of stuff. Like, oh. I've known Sky for a long time. Like, he's a bro. So yeah. if he's pushing you, it's because you have the talent. That's awesome. I totally get like your instrumental stuff and your passion for that and that's your thing. But like I remember when we decided to be a power duo and that meant one of us had to sing and um I had to totally relearn um I didn't I don't I shouldn't say I had to relearn drums, but I had to learn how to play drums and sing and I had to tone down oh, my yeah. drums to like be able to know where I'm going and remember the lyrics and I, I get it. It's challenging. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's difficult. I, I couldn't imagine. I, I can barely fiddle around with drums now, let alone singing and playing drums at the same time. Yeah. I can't believe my brain does it. I've been doing it for so many years that I just can do it. Mm -hmm. I remember how hard it was. And in fact, when I started recording, uh, uh, I think we started recording in 2015. So we've been, writing music since 2010 together. And then we started recording our songs in 2015. I had to do drums, drum tracks and then vocal tracks. And it was hard for me to differentiate being able to just do vocals without drums and vice versa. And oh, it, wow. it used to be different for me. I, I used to like struggle with both of them and then I couldn't do both without each other. <laughs> That's so interesting. So it's very odd. Like, no, I already know how to do it together. Don't don't make me relearn it. I'm like, right, right. <laughs> I'm out of my comfort zone again. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I can hear this new single that you released in like a movie. It needs to be in some kind of action movie or something. I don't know. Like I, I just you, picture, picture you something. Know. Do it. Yeah, uh, people have told me that they can see a lot of my music in John Wick. Oh, um, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yes. So, yeah. And then, of course, those are my ultimate favorite uh, movies. So I'm like, oh. That is cool. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's, well, the remake will have That would be cool. Like, <laughs> I, I hear that there's, like, a new John Wick coming out, too. Oh, yeah. Fourth one. I can't just do the third one though, actually. Um, Did you get the, oh, <laughs> the third one's coming out? When is that? No, the third one is already out. Oh, it's already out. Okay. Yeah. okay. Cool. Yeah. Right on. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, right on. She said right on. I did <laughs> drink. But you said it twice, so. Ah. Oh. Okay. Keeping on <laughs> Or she said nice. Oh. <laughs> so you already talked a little bit about um, your future goals as a musician. But do you have any more you wanted to highlight on our show? Right now, I'm just really working really diligently on getting a live show, um, hopefully in October, November, actually. Okay and uh, look out for a new music video for um, the song Resistance from the- Oh, from yay. The <laughs> so, Definitely but, let us know so we can um, highlight, highlight it on, you know, our show and right. also on our page. Yeah, absolutely. Pages or yeah, that, that one was um, pretty fun to do. It's actually kind of uncomfortable. Um, oh. so I'll just leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> Okay. That's Where one thing about being a musician is we have to do a lot of things that we're not really a hundred percent comfortable with. Yeah. But, but it's neat too because it's really I want to say the only avenue you can use to like it like I said earlier, to be your vulnerable self and another side of yourself that you haven't really felt comfortable with the show. Right. But it's you don't feel comfortable to show outside, but you feel comfortable to be uncomfortable. <laughs> right. We, we totally get it. I get that. Yeah. Like, I'm comfortable on stage, but I fucking hate it. 
<laughs> but I feel at home, but I'm glad I'm behind stuff. Yeah. Right. You know, it's like I'm showing my vulnerable side and it's difficult to show that. But no, I, I totally get that. Like we really bear ourselves out there every time, every show, every time we perform, every time we make a song, mm -hmm. because you know that we're going to touch somebody in a way that other people and I mean, this sounds weird, but in a way that other people have not touched them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's something totally different about the language of music. Definitely. Mm -hmm. It's something that everyone can understand and relate to. And um, yeah, you're right. When you, when you talk about just having that feeling or someone reaching out to you saying, Oh my God, I love your music. It really made me like, Kind of go through a hard time I was going through right now. It's like, oh, I don't care. We don't know, know how they, how we touch, how our music touches them. Right. Yeah. And so it's really nice to have a fan come up to you and tell you, like, mm -hmm. dude, like, you really changed my life, and you just feel like me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I okay. changed your life. <laughs> but you do, you do change people's lives. I know that um, I can relate to your music, Nuda, like in a way that brings me back to some really special times back in my life, back as a teenager. So, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's a good feeling. I don't want it to be negative. It's always a good thing. Yeah, yeah it's like nostalgic. Yes, very nostalgic. Mm -hmm. And it's nice, it's refreshing to have somebody have that like same thought process as you and have that same vision, you know what I mean? Music wise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. I love that. Um, it's funny because that also brings out my introvertness even more in my bubble when people tell me <laughs> things like that. Yeah, kind of I, I know it's, like, like, it's, like, <laughs> it's humbling, but at the same time, it's like nerve wracking. Yeah, yeah very. We're all introverts in a weird sort of way. I force myself to be like out there and happy and just like, I got to get this and this and this and this. I got to go talk to these people and do this. Right. But really, yeah. really in my mind, I'm like, I want to go hide in my corner in my closet. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We definitely have to put ourselves out there. And as women in this culture uh, in the States, we're taught to be like that. We're taught to be like, oh, should I take the compliment or not? Oh, am I really good enough? Where it's like, yes, we are good enough. Yes, take the compliment. So I've been trying to work on that myself. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a really good point. Um, do you have a different level to kind of step over? Yeah. yeah. Like today, the compliment from my own band. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, like it was, it was so sweet, but I was just like blown away at the same time. Because I just don't feel like I'm where I want to be musically. I always feel like I can progress, 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 progress. And I feel like musicians always do anyways. But just to have that reassurance was really nice. Yeah, it's always nice to be built up by other musicians and not cut down. And that's what we're all about is helping yes. build musicians up because we all need each other. Yes. We're all in it together. <laughs> It's yes. all a strong community, and it's really nice to, to hang out with new people and hear their stories of things, too. Uh, so, And that's what we're about. Mm -hmm. We want to know about you, your story. Like, where do you come from? What inspires you? Where do you want to go? Where do you see your band? What kind of, you know? Yeah. We want to know about you as a musician and you as a person. Right. And speaking of stories, do you have a story or two you'd like to share with us? We're at 824, so we've got just a little over 30 minutes left. And we like to ask our guests, what stories stick out for you? What do you remember most about being a musician? Wow. <laughs> you can <laughs> have one or two. That's fine. But that, That's a big one. Um, so this is maybe just a story or something that happened while being a musician, if that's, that's kind of... That's absolutely, yes. Okay. Uh, so the very first 
show of the last electronic band I was in, um, we got to open up for West Borland. His what? His band, Black Light Burn. <laughs> and when and West Borland is like one of my biggest idols. And I would cover their songs all the time. And then when our bandmate said, Hey yeah, we're we got a show, we're gonna open up for Black Light Burns, and I'm like, What? <laughs> what? Like, what? What's what? Oh my god. I'm like, I'm gonna pass out right now, and this is this is crazy. Um, so when we actually got there, and this is our first show as a band too, so it was oh. very nerve-wracking that day, let alone having your idol in the next room. Oh. Uh, play uh, so I'm like don't mess up don't mess up don't mess up <laughs> and um the, so it was really cool and actually my sister and I she's a bass player uh, we got to go and hang out with him afterwards uh -huh. and, too, and, and meet him and everything and he was a cool guy we got some pictures with him too of course and um, that was that was just an amazing thing that we got the opportunity to do Wow, that is That's a cool, cool story. story. Yes. <laughs> um, another one fun fun story is have you guys heard of the band Orgy? Oh, I love Orgy. I, they, I don't know. I don't think I are you serious. Oh, Maxine, I'm I'm gonna introduce you to Orgy. You're gonna freaking love them. Maybe I have heard of them. You, you have Blue Monday. Didn't they do um? Didn't they do that um um? New Order song, Blue Monday. Blue Monday. Yeah. Like you do. Yes. That one. Yes. Yep, that one. Yeah. Yes. We actually got to open up for them as well. Yes. And, uh, that was a lot of fun. And my sister and I, um, we actually hung out with uh, Jay Gordon in their trailer, listened what? to the new singles they haven't released yet. Oh my so, god! <laughs> that was that was pretty pretty crazy. So, uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, being a musician has its perks. Like, I, I it's my, crazy. My, I have 15 minutes of fame too. It was like, um, the Tacoma Dome. I was playing for uh, Curtis Young, who is Dr. Dre's son, and I got to jam with like. Um, Young Hump, Too Short, Red Man, Method Man, EB40, Busta Rhyme, DMX. I mean, it was it was fun. Those guys are a blast. Mm -hmm. That's so but cool. At the same time, I probably wouldn't ever work for another rapper again. <laughs> oh. I just yeah. play bass, but still, like. Yeah. They're divas, man. They are <laughs> divas. But it was still fun, and I get to, like, say, I played the Tacoma Dome for five seconds of my life. <laughs> that is so, really cool. Yeah. But, you know, I think you're going to get there, and I think that you're going to get there with your own music. So Yes. yes. Thank you. And I think that's the difference, you know. I was a backup band in some unheard of dude who just happened to be the son of some famous dude, you know, but you're going to get there because you earned it and you're talented and you're good. Ooh, somebody says, don't forget about the goth wedding. Tell us about yes. that. Oh my God. So uh, we had some fans uh, message us. Uh, they came to like all of our shows and it's like, Hey, uh, we're getting married and we're having a gothic theme. Could, we, could you guys play <laughs> at our wedding? We're like, okay. So we all got even even more goffed up, and uh, we set up the entire entire um, setup, and it was super cute. It's just a small, intimate wedding. Um, there's like 20 people, and we we played all our songs, and it was super cool. Got to see. Oh wait, yeah. We see we see this. This is what we see. <laughs> yes yeah. yes that, that was a lot of fun and then of course you have to have those shows where like two people show up or no one shows oh, up yeah. oh yeah oh yeah there have been so many times i have played for like just the bartender <laughs> and the only reason why is because he couldn't escape 
Or else oh. it would have been like a completely empty freaking venue. But you know, that's but then I've had like you know, eight thousand fucking people at my fucking shows. Literally. So it just it it's yeah, give and take. It it's give and take. I mean, you never know how it's gonna be. You never I don't know. The music yeah. scene is fickle. Okay. Well, and we, I know, we, we like, every day, but we still can't figure it out. Sometimes mm-hmm. people don't show up, but I bring my same show. Like whether it's to one person, two people, 200, 2000, I'm going to bring the same show to anybody because yeah. I'm really passionate about what I do. So I right. agreed. It's the same. Same. Yeah, and I can yeah. see you. Anuda, you play with your passion too. I was yeah. watching your face. You can see it. I always watch the face. I um, I'm so I'm a drummer, so like we always like watch people drumming, and then we have to watch stupid drummer face. <laughs> you don't have stupid drummer face, but you have like the I love what I'm doing face. Yeah, the passion, oh. the, music, the love for it. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, that's nice to see. Then like. <laughs> Stupid drummer yeah. face every damn time. Oh, the tongue sticking out. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I had to hire a photographer to come do stills. Or like the dr- double chin. For like- me, so I never had <laughs> stupid drummer face. I was like, Oh my god! You know, so, <laughs> so I didn't have like the. <laughs> <laughs> Why is my mouth always open? I know. <laughs> and I'm always like concentrated on one one symbol. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, I've gotten some really bad pictures. Even playing guitar. Like, I was thinking to myself, like, why am I making that face? Like, what is going on? Yeah, the musician. Like, the in between moments. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> I swear I'm going to put a montage together. It's just like stupid music and faces. <laughs> Those are easier to find than photographers. Like, seriously, like I hear from all live music photographers all the time. It's really hard to get a really good shot because you're moving all the time. You're making. I'm gonna get hated for this, but the first person who's going up, dead beat blackout tremor. You look like bubbles from fucking Trailer Park Boys. We do like. <laughs> Craig, really? Yes, as Hakate. I, I love. I, sorry, that. girl. Sorry, I threw you under the bus. Right. <laughs> I've gotten really good shots of Craig myself, but I'm a drummer. Oh no, 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 no! Like, like oh, wait and wait and wait. She showed us this picture of him. She blew it up, and he's just straight up bubbles from the trailer park boys. Just like. <laughs> Oh goodness! The mouth and the glasses. I mean, I couldn't stop laughing. Oh, let's see. Adam says, "Can you post a link to Nuda's music?" Yes. Where can we find you, Nuda? Tell yes. us where to find you. Yeah, you can. Go wait, 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 wait! He said, "I listen to a lot of synth and dark wave at the soon step." No, what? The, nice. Let's talk about soon step. So like Soup Stop, I'm going to put out a big hey, because I love that place. I used to work there. Um, mm-hmm. Lux stands for Life Enhancement Charity Trust. And it is a nonprofit. They sell soup and sandwiches and um, some salads. But 100% of the tips go to the homeless to help with hearing aids, vision, and, and um, dental work so that they can get jobs. Um, all of the leftover soup and anything that's leftover food wise goes to missions to help feed the hungry. So Adam is a chef there. He's actually the manager there. He was cool. hey, so shout out to Soup Stop and a big shout out to Nuda and let us know where can we find your music? Uh, you can find it on the official website. So it's nuda-official.com, and you'll see all the goodies there. Music, merchandise, uh, T-shirts, um, just released some new posters. And um, there's also new bundles you can get. And uh, you know, Yes. Perfect. Yep. That's it. Where are you um, going, everybody? 
yeah, there's some new fan bundles and then an ultimate fan bundle where you get like pretty much all the merchandise there. Ooh, fan bundles, yes. Yeah. Um, yep, everything's there. And, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, oh, so Scott is talking about my HR Dagger guitar. Um, he's another really cool artist. Um, I love, and this guitar is my gym guitar, and I saw it when I was about 15. And seven ish You're years welcome, later, <laughs> like seven ish years later, when I had an actual job, I actually saved up money and found this guitar. It was in Maine, and I was able to buy it, and I was so excited. I'm mean, gonna grab it with this. Oh, that's cool. I'm excited. Yeah, I want to see. I mean, as a drummer, I'm always excited. Ooh. Oh, my, oh my gosh. Look at that. Oh, wow. I am kind of jealous. If I was a guitar player, I'd just be like, oh, my God, I just totally want the guitar. I'm a drummer. I totally want the guitar. Oh, funny. This thing is heavy, too. Oh. It's ridiculous. So as a bass player, one of the things that I hated was that basses are always freaking heavy, right? <laughs> Right. So yeah, right. five years ago, I bought my new bass. He's um, red wood grain, and I named him Ivan. He's an Ivanez, so he's Ivan Ivanez. Very nice. And he weighs less than eight pounds. <laughs> wow. So this is one of the lightest uh, basses I've ever had, ever, ever. Wow. I like it. It's time for yeah. me to decide to just switch full time to drums. So <laughs> it's just a little more heavy than than guitar. Right, but it's a bass and like you know, I don't know. It has active and passive pickups, so Oh nice. Nice. So that's nice. Drink. Oh, that's, nice. All I know about, <laughs> that's all I know about bass guitars is like if they have active, passive pickups. I know how to set my bass amp so it sounds good to me. Yeah. And that's about all I know. Like, I can play, I can tell you notes, <laughs> but I, I can't even. Outside of that, I don't know shit about it. And I've been playing it for 28 years, so you would think that I would retain like some sort of information. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know. Like, like switch to the dark side of the drums. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know. I just, that was my thing. Just, I'm sure you, do you have a preference as to guitar or keys? Which one do you prefer? Yeah, so guitars, I love Ibanez. And I picked Ibanez because Korn was one of my favorite bands growing oh. up too. And Monkey used the Ibanez guitars. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it's, I didn't cool. know that he used Ibanez. So, <laughs> and that that's the brand of the H.R. Geiger guitar too. Really? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, and keyboards. Um, I barely scratch the surface of synthesizers. Uh, the, the Korg is my first one, and I haven't gone through everything that this thing can do. It does so much. Um, I do a lot more MIDI stuff. So. That's kind of, That's kind of where I'm at with like drums. Like I haven't experienced everything in drums, so like this is what I like right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, it's like a lot too, you know. Like that's what I do. So yeah, um, yeah. It's a lot of it's a fun stuff to learn too. I mean, in every single aspect. I mean, with working with the the DAW, the um, setting up live shows, like backtracks and such. Um, so I have that tracks and I'm playing um, two instruments from each song. Um, and yeah, there, there's just so much to learn. I bet. Like, but it's, it's got to be so rewarding at the same time. It oh. is. Um, I've also, uh, I mean, I've written every song and I've also, also um, mixed every, every song too. And wow. then I had wow. a guy uh, master master the songs. Um, wow. it, it's a lot of work and it, it is a sense of um, just satisfaction when you hear the, thing, the the final result of everything. And it's just like, a oh my God. I seriously like the when um, the album was finished 
hitting master and I listened to it. I'm like, seriously, like started crying happy tears. Like this is like how I pictured it to sound like. And it sounds That's beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. Agreed. So which kitty cat do you have with you right uh, this is pancake. This is a pancake doll. This pancake. It's a pancake. Hi, pretty kitty. She's it's a pancake. So I don't know so what so my cat was. He was here, but I'm not his favorite person. But I'm not his least favorite person. He doesn't like hate me. <laughs> You're like, You're just a human that happens. <laughs> I'm definitely the last person to move into the facility. So <laughs> he's got, that, I'm the newest guys, but I feed him and water him. And when his dad is gone. Like, I'm like, I'll give you lovings. <laughs> so we're building a relationship, but he's still kind of iffy. You know how cats are. They're kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big cat fans. Have you guys heard of exploding kittens? Yeah, and see, I'm a dog person, so I think they can sense that almost. Like, yeah, he likes the enemy. <laughs> I don't really like the enemy. It's just they're happy. They're always happy to see me. Whereas you're, you don't care. <laughs> like, oh, your helmet doesn't get to my dog. <laughs> like, so what do you I guess what advice you have for other musicians and um, uh, aspiring musicians? I would say don't be afraid to try things out yourself. Um, I, I learned a lot, especially <laughs> with digital edition. There's so many different bits, and it was it was scary, you know, to like, holy crap, am I doing this right? Um, it, am I will I like not have the rights to my music or anything like that or um, just just go out there. Use a I use CD Baby. Um, okay. Okay. I, I was just going to ask if you use CD Baby. That and uh, Spotify is very popular now. And uh, something I didn't learn until afterwards was um, you can't get your songs considered on the playlist uh, if it's your first time releasing something. So if you want your music to be considered in playlists, release a single first. And then the second time you can be considered. So um, that, that was one thing that kind of back. I'm like, man, I have all these songs in the album and I can't submit them to be on like a famous Spotify playlist. But I submitted my new single uh, to be, to hopefully be on a playlist. So can you up. like put out like a crappier single and then put out like your badass album as a playlist? You... Uh, you so what I'm thinking about doing is releasing a third album with all of the songs from the first album. So make it like a, a deluxe album with all these songs and then like maybe five or six new ones. Oh, my cat is trying to eat me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. He really is trying to eat you. Yes. Oh my god, I take it off. No, panda <laughs> pancake. Pancake, no. Um, Be nice to mama. Yeah. Don't maybe put syrup on you. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, we were talking about the playlist and oh yeah, um release the Lux album with all the songs that I first released. Um to, to hopefully submit those out again. Um but you may not even get your song on the playlist because there's so many submissions and you have to describe the heck out of the song to hopefully get it to match. The, the sort of genre you want it to be in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, so you know, I already have a problem with that because my band is like, it can fit in so many different genres. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even know how to really describe my band. I feel like it's pop punk with metal undertones. Mm -hmm. That but, was a hard thing too, is like they have very limited choices of what kind of music it is, which sort of makes it a little bit easier but at the same time like yeah but it's not like that's a little bit different like this um so that's why you have to describe it or what i like to do is ask people like who does my music sound like or what do you picture it being on so i've heard a few few bands like uh massive attack is one that someone mentioned oh, cool. um, 
So getting that, you can you can um, add those tidbits to when you're submitting songs because every single place asks, uh, what does your music sound like? Right, and that's that's been the hardest um, for my band. Like, what bands do you sound like? <laughs> I have no idea. I have no band that, like, um, Debbie Blackout has described my band, um, Fatal Butterfly, as kind of bikini kill sounding. Um, it's just really hard to, un it's, yeah, and like it, another thing too is like we're fatal butterfly. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> right? Yeah, we bring our own shit to the table. Like shit, you won't even heard of. You won't even put together. Right, and that's what the thing like, We're all unique, and we're like, well, I don't sound like you. Right, else, it's like, like me. if you put us in a genre, like mm -hmm. IPK, we're like a political punk band. Yeah, that, that's no, hard. I don't hard. always stand by what my boys say in the band because I'm just the drummer. But <laughs> well, this conversation makes me think of um, when I played my last show with Dead Beat Blackout, too. So shout out to Hikate. Like there were a bunch okay. of there were a bunch of older gentlemen and they kept telling her that she sounded like this male vocalist from another metal band. And she she was kind of like, why does everybody compare me to a dude? I'm not a dude. And I was like, you're just a company. You're you. You are you. You have your voice. And I think that some of these people just have to relate, especially female vocals, to a male vocalist to make it okay or something. Right. Like, like, it's really <laughs> odd, but, like, you are you, and you, you only sound like you, and that's okay. As a yeah. drummer, I'm always compared to John Bonham from um, Led Zeppelin. All wow. the time. Oh my gosh, yes. I All the time. Okay. But you now here's the thing that people don't know. I don't really like Led Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> like, they are not my favorite. I don't <laughs> like them. Um, and but I gotta tell you, every time I listen to them and I listen to the drums, I sound like John Bonham. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> it's just my style, I guess. Yeah, you're in the corner. Anthony's sneaking in. Hi, Anthony. Hi. Uh, <laughs> is. Anthony from Two Headed Crow and Fatal Butterfly. Forgot he's in my band, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He's in that band, too. Oh, yeah. This whole time I thought it was just that gay the bass player, dude. So, Nuda, you might have already told us this at the beginning of the show, but I might have missed it. What was your first band? What was your first band you were in? Uh, first band, actually, was when I was 16, and it was in a metal band. You were? What was your metal band called? It was called Sadie's Vault. Ooh. And Sadie was the name of the woman singer's cat. Oh. Uh, that, was, that was pretty cool. And uh, she was a, a great singer. Um, we did covers of, like, Seven Deaths and Disturbed, and then <coughs> um, I, I came in afterwards and I was taught all the guitar pieces from the drummer because the drummer made pretty much most of the songs. And that's when I was introduced to a drop C tuning and a guitar. I'm like, oh, this is my favorite thing ever. So I like haven't shied away from drop C tuning since that's then. That's awesome. Ooh, I love it. And um, that was the first time like i really got to rock out and play guitar and just like let loose on on stage because every a, a lot of people see me as like the the quiet innocent kaylee who's like super tiny and small and, sweet. <laughs> and then now on stage i'm like going like this everywhere I'm like oh my yeah. God. <laughs> there's a side between the tony side and then my crash side when I'm on yeah. stage, I'm crash fist fight. Like, I'm a force to be reckoned with, but Tony Sweet and like lovable and really, well, maybe a little chaotic, a little bit, <laughs> but in a fun way. Like, you know what I mean? Like, very outgoing yeah. and social. Definitely, yes, yes. <laughs> Well, and I'm a Gemini, so I'm both, you know, my myself and Maxine. And Maxine's a little more hardcore, a little more out there. Um, 
a little more, I don't take anybody's crap. And then there's like the Mrs. Maxwell of me that teaches at the high school. And I expect, you know, like um, students to um, act professional because I do that too. In fact, we had our first day of high school today and I talked a little bit about um, who I am. I have a PowerPoint I show to the students and I say, you know, I'm in the rock world and I drop F-bombs and I swear all the time in that world. But I clean it up here because it's my professional environment. And if I can do it, you can do it. And they're all like, aha. Yeah, that's really cool. like, it's hard, Mrs. Maxwell. And I'm like, I know it's hard. But like I said, if I can do it, you can do it. And you have to practice that for the work world because not everywhere can you do that. I know, and you have a whole new world of freaking students this year, don't you? Oh, I have some repeat students in my Ceramics 2 classes, which is helpful because I have a lot of peers help peers. So I'll have kids teaching kids eventually during the semester as it unfolds. I love that. I love that so much. But I, <laughs> I am teaching um, social skills again. Um, I, I had a break from that last year, so my social skills kiddos are new. And actually, I shared... Um, our flyer for tonight with you on it, Nuda, during my slideshow, I told them about my podcast on YouTube and I had the recent flyer and I told them a little bit about our show and a little bit about Crash. And Oh and my I, gosh. And they're like Googling. They're oh, like, what? <laughs> oh yeah. She, Mrs. Maxwell, <laughs> make sure that like her students know about what's going on in like musicians hangout. That's super cool. we, we, you know, we want to feature all of our friends. Yes. You know, we, we're we trying to bring the music community together. Definitely. And Nuda, as a one community. If you have any friends that would like to be on our show, just connect them with us. We're open to any genre. We're open to anyone. Like, we want to support all musicians. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. I'll totally do that. Cool. That's great. So is there anything you'd like to share? We have about eight more minutes left. And um, is there anything else you'd like to share about yourself or your music before we sign off? Um, just a huge thank you to everyone. Uh, I had a Kickstarter um, before wow. doing all this and people contributed and I couldn't have um, been able to get that push to get everything um, going to how it is today. So. Thank you, thank you, everyone, especially for the time, too. Um, and listening to my music, that's all I care about is just, just listen to it and enjoy it. I don't care if you don't even buy anything, because enjoy music and just thank you. Oh, I love that. Oh. Thank, you. thank you for being on our show. Yeah, you know, thank you so now. much. And uh, we just um, signed up for... Um, what was it? A lifetime package? It's a lifetime package. So we get a lifetime discount for like the full um, stream yard. So we're going to be taking advantage of that just as soon as I figure out how to take advantage of all of those features. Um, <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> so stay tuned. Crash is probably going to make a mess of some stuff for a minute, but... <laughs> No, it'll be awesome in the end. <laughs> you do great, girl. You'll be fine. As soon as I figure it out. Um, I'm not real tech savvy. Drums don't really come with a whole lot of like plugs and wires and stuff. So I got to figure it out. Like I said, I just click buttons till it happens. Well, I've said it on other shows. She's definitely more tech savvy than I am. Um, I if it weren't for crash we wouldn't have a show i mean you're amazing thank oh you. thank you i couldn't admit like musicians hang out has been the best thing i think in my life in a long time oh. like, just getting to hang out with you and the musicians that like like um nuda like it's amazing i really love it i love it a lot yeah we're having some super cool people on the show oh absolutely so thank you. Thank you. We can't thank you enough for being on our show because like I said, we're still growing our brand. We're still trying to, um, you know, um, we're still trying to figure out like everything. Yeah. So we just, you know, with that package, we get promoted more on StreamYard, which is awesome. And, yes. and we'll see how much it grows because we want to just keep growing and keep supporting 
as in our mission statement, that community network of musicians to just help each other out and, and safe. Speaking please. of which, we should probably um, ask people to please, when you click on our link, please subscribe to our channel. Like it's so important. Our numbers can really make a big difference. We can go live without having to do a whole bunch of other steps that are pretty unnecessary but we can't do it without the numbers. So please subscribe to our channel. It takes literally two seconds of your life. Um, so if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe now to StreamYard Musicians Hangout on YouTube. And we are pushing for subscribers for our next uh, show. Our next week, we will have uh, the infamous, the well-known, the artist. artist. Artist the Spoon Man. The spoon Man. Spoon Man. Come together with your hand. <laughs> me. Yes. So Spoon Man will be live on our show um, next week. Um, yeah. So you, you definitely want to subscribe to watch to that. And yes, Spaniard. Nuda. Nuda is amazing. And yeah. you definitely need to check her out. Definitely. Um, go on Spotify. Are you on Reverb Nation? Reverb Nation, Spotify, SoundCloud, CD Baby, all the things. Perfect. Definitely. You guys got to check her out. She's amazing. <laughs> like, amazing. Blew my mind tonight with her. Oh, I totally got to fangirl out. I couldn't wait to meet Me you. Me too. So. <laughs> And I can't wait to meet you in person someday. It will happen. I will see you. Yes. Definitely. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> All right, guys. So we have four minutes left. Um, is there anything that you guys want to go over before we call it a night? Oh, so Scott from our chat room says, thank you, Nuda, for your musical contribution Aww. to the world. Oh, I love that. I really have to agree with you, Scott. Yes. I yeah. really have to agree with you. Like, a lot of people don't know this, but I am really into electronic music. Um, a lot. A lot. I really have a lot of respect for it. It takes a lot. Everybody thinks that it's just like um, a computer, a keyboard, and a mouse pad or whatever, but it yeah. takes a lot of time, rhythm, Passion. Thinking things oh, out, passion, so feeling. So, yeah, give respect re where respect is, is needed. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do the things that you do, Nita. <laughs> like, that's for joining us. Does anybody in the chat room have any questions for Nuda before we sign off? Let's see. Drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all yeah, somebody has a drum roll over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, well, maybe not. So that's okay. Just thanks for your contribution to the music world. And yeah, your fans are all nude. <laughs> yes. And actually, we've had the biggest. Um, message board of all time. Yes, we have. This has been the biggest chat room. And before. we've had the most viewers, too. That's that awesome. Room. We're gaining oh, some. I love it. So, top viewers were 12 people. Ooh, oh. the world. <laughs> Moving up. <laughs> yeah. So, but oh, yes, thank you. you guys for all tuning in tonight. Um, we love you here at Musicians Hangout. Thank you, Nuda, for coming in and playing your brand new single for us. That was great. That was amazing. Like, I really had a great time watching you tonight and learning more about you as a musician and as a person. Thank you. Well, don't forget that we do post this on our YouTube channel as soon as we can, so you can watch the show if you have missed it or if anybody you know has missed it, they can watch it at their own leisure. And I will be reposting this on Facebook just as soon as it becomes available. Um, sometimes it takes a few minutes. 
So yeah, um, stay tuned. It will be available on multiple platforms. And fair share, share everybody. Please do. Because us musicians, we work hard for you guys. So we want to thank you for all your support throughout the years. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. You're welcome. Thank you for being on tonight. Thank you. Hope to see you guys again. Absolutely. All right, Maxine, you want to take us out? Absolutely. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. <laughs> see y'all next week. Next week. Awesome. Yay. Yay. Thank you, guys. Yeah.